wow, he must be dead. Are you dead, sir? Yeah, and you're not gonna keep me tugging. I'm full of uh -huh. so We have an ER doctor who is treating a patient and essentially goes ballistic on him, acts completely inappropriately. Hey, what's up guys? My name is John and I'm an emergency medicine PA. I've been working in the emergency department since 2019. A couple of people have been asking for more PA reacts videos and so I am here to deliver. Samuel is here because he collapsed during a college basketball practice. At the end of the conditioning, I noticed that I was getting like really weak and I went outside to get a drink of water and I ended up falling out on the lawn. One of the coaches saw and he like called 911 to get the ambulance. I was unconscious for a little bit, but then I came to and I was still really weak at that point. Making matters worse, Samuel needs his anti-anxiety medication. The doctor who attends to him is refusing. She didn't think there was anything wrong with me, but then she hasn't even talked to me or, or assessed me at that point. He doesn't have clonopin because he doesn't have he doesn't have his clonopin. Right, that took four hours to get through. So what am I supposed to do? I'm sorry, sir. You were the least sick of all the people who are here who are dying. I don't know why she was so upset about it. You know, it was like we didn't ask her for anything more than just just find out what's wrong. So we have a young, otherwise healthy patient who collapsed while playing basketball and the coach called 911. This is not anything out of the ordinary. If this patient came into my department and I was seeing him, oh, does he have a heart problem or a family history of sudden cardiac death at a young age? Does he have, is he dehydrated? Does he have electrolyte abnormalities or issues? Is he in rhabdo? Was he playing for so long? Was, was the environment very hot? Did he have a vasovagal syncopal event? Um, does he have a blood clot, PE? There could be something going on. And we're here to try and make the patient feel better, but also get to the bottom of it, make sure it's nothing that will kill him, that he doesn't need to stay in the hospital, right? So that's my thought process initially, at least by just seeing the patient presentation. Somebody like this, I would consider some labs, maybe a urine test, an EKG, put them on the monitor, give them some IV fluids. I mean, it's a pretty simple case. You order everything, you go see the patient right away, you give them an hour or two, see kind of what comes back and talk to them, see how they feel. Guarantee you this guy would probably be feeling a lot better. My first comment is actually about the recording itself. In Pennsylvania, both parties have to consent to being audio or video recorded and you have to notify that individual that you are recording them. Typically, if a patient is recording an ER encounter, myself and the nurses, we just don't even go in the room. Usually these people aren't having emergencies. They're trying to make a scene. There is a difference between recording just to record or to put on social media and recording for some sort of educational purpose. Oh, I wanna learn how you're dressing that wound so I could do so at home. I've now worked at five different hospitals in Pennsylvania and all of them had have had a policy against video recording in the emergency department. So I would not be able to comment on this video if it was not recorded. So it's a little hypocritical of me. I just want you guys to all acknowledge that you should know your state and local laws. You should know the policies in place at the facility you are in because at the end of the day, if you're video recording something and then you hear screaming and other patient care matters, you could actually violate somebody else's patient privacy. He doesn't have clonopin because he doesn't have he doesn't have his clonopin. Right, that took four hours to get through. So what am I supposed to do? I'm sorry, sir. You were the least sick of all the people who are here who are dying. This is a common thing, unfortunately, in many American ERs. You might wind up waiting a couple of hours. In this case, four hours. On one end, I agree with the patient. Four hours is a long time. However, depending on how the department is, how busy they are, how their staffing is, never say never. You may be stuck in the ER. We've had people stuck in the ER for eight hours, 12 hours, depending on what's going on. And so four hours, unreasonable, you know, we should strive to do better, but also not unheard of. The doctor admittedly said he is the least sick person in the department. The thing is, you don't tell the patient that they're the least sick. You can say, we have other emergencies, I'm sorry, apologize, acknowledge their weight, but you don't go and tell a patient that they have no need to be here, that they're wasting everybody's time, sort of thing, like you're beneath me, you are the least sick person, you are not worthy of my time as an ER doctor. That's, that's not the right, that's not the right approach. How does that make you feel as a patient? Especially when this guy collapsed, you know, they think he has something wrong with him. He's a young, healthy kid. Why is he like this, right? So to the family, they're concerned, they're worried. Sit up. Sit up. Dude, well, sit, up. sit up. I'm having you sit up. I can't get up. Put get your up. hands on here and pull yourself up. 
I cannot do that. Yes, you can. I cannot do it in the, in the ambulance. I cannot do it now. We have a young, healthy guy saying, I cannot lift myself up. You know, the doctor is trying to have him sit up. Sh definitely should not be cursing in any sense. I think the guy could get up, but if he can't get up, okay, let's help him. Hey, bring the nurse in. Hey, let's help you sit up. Grab my arm. You know, let's lift the, the head of the bed up. Like, give him some assistance. It's not that hard to just go a little extra step and help the patient. Wait now. I just tried to inhale and I even told her I could not inhale. <laughs> Oh, wow, he must be dead. Are you dead, sir? Mocking the patient that they can't breathe is also a no-go, not a good idea. Obviously, you can see that the guy's breathing. He's, he's trying to say, I can't take a deep breath. You know, I'm, I'm too weak to sit up. These are, are things that should warrant you to at least look into something and try to help him out versus sitting there and laughing at him and cursing at him and calling him, you know, full of BS and saying that he's the least sick patient in the emergency department. Just, it's totally unacceptable. They gave him fluids and they gave him something, a, a pill. I don't know what they gave him. Yeah. For what? For his, mm. for his pain and for the, uh, for the anxiety. So you need narcotics? Is that what you need? Here we go. <sighs> I just need pain reliever and anxiety medication. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So you need narcotics. Yep, I'm a drug seeker. I need narcotics. I'm being brushed off. But this guy already knows he's being set up. Here we go. He said, here we go. I'm getting screwed over. If I could get up off this chair, I really would. But yeah, you really should because this is ridiculous. I can't. And you're not going to keep yeah. tugging. Oh. I'm full of uh -huh. I'm not saying anything different than what I've said the whole time. Like me. No, you have changed your story every time. Whoa. She's starting her cursory physical exam. She's going to listen to his heart and lungs, I think. You know, it looks like she's being a little rough. The uncomfortable encounter finally comes to an end, but not before one final unprofessional parting shot. Put an IV in him, give him a liter of fluid, and we'll get him out here. That's what he says he needs. He's obviously a doctor and he knows what he needs. She sent a different nurse in there to do all the work and she didn't even want to see us after that. So once again, completely unprofessional. Patient's not acting like a doctor or anything, not telling her what to do. Truthfully, if this was video was the entire encounter with her, pretty tame from the patient and family member. They didn't really do anything inappropriate. And uh, you know, this lady just jumped from zero to a hundred because she walked in, thought he needed nothing, then thought, you know, since he asked for some medications and some some medical care that he was a doctor. There are patients that walk in with a whole laundry list of things they want, think they know so much because they read some WebMD and watched a few YouTube videos. I think healthcare should be about a discussion between a patient and a doctor or PA, whoever's seeing you. These are my concerns. You know, I think I need X, Y, Z. What do you think? And hear what they say, because they might say, you know what, I agree with you, or let's 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 order that test or maybe you absolutely positively do not need that at this time. Have a conversation. That's what it's about. She walks out. She wants nothing to do with them. Throw in an IV, give him some fluids. He knows what he needs, blah, blah, blah. But this is all stuff that I'm telling you guys, I would have ordered right from the beginning. I would have ordered all that stuff. Well, you know, why argue with the guy? Get him what he needs, make him feel a little better and get him going. You know, after he's sitting there for four hours and nothing's been done, I mean, I, I could appreciate why he would be a little frustrated. They also made a comment that the doctor did not show back up afterwards. You know, she didn't go back in the room. She was done with them. Um, I will tell you that depending on how busy it is, it's very nice to go back in, talk to the patient, review the labs, tell them how everything's good or not good or what to do. Sometimes you don't have time for that. The nurse can discharge the patient, give them the paperwork. The paperwork can have all the instructions that the doctor types out or just prints out. Now, if you wanna sit there and say, I wanna to speak to the doctor, the PA, the NP, before I go, that's fine. Just understand you might have to wait. Once the news media gets hold of the video, the doctor is banned from working at this hospital in any branch of its group. A hospital CEO apologizes to Sam on behalf of the medical group. Sam told me personally, he's like, I'm never going back to another emergency room. I don't know why that they that they treat me this way. But I haven't done anything to deserve it. I, I still have the same mindset. Like, I don't go to emergency rooms or hospitals unless I'm, like, near dying. <laughs> so, I mean, that's never really going to leave me. I, if, without the video, I think this doctor still would be practicing at that hospital, truthfully. But the video is damning. Damning evidence about 
how unprofessional this behavior was. Sam made a comment that I'm not gonna go to the ER unless I'm dying or near dying. And truthfully, Sam, that is the only reason you should go to the ER. We do have a lot of people that treat the emergency department as a clinic or because they don't have a family doctor and they come in with all these family medicine complaints or things that urgent care could easily handle. I would say Sam's case though, warrants coming to the ER and collapsing during a basketball game, you know, feeling weak, feeling short of breath, all very appropriate reasons to come to the ER. But overall, don't come to the ER unless you think you're having an emergency, you are dying, you feel like you have no other options. We are there 24 seven, 365 days a year so we are there we are we are there we're happy to see you what do you guys think about this video please leave a comment down below i love reading your comments if you enjoy this sort of content please subscribe i'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers be one of the first pas to do so i think that would be really cool check me out on instagram for more stories and videos on the life of a pa and guys as always stay safe out there have a great rest of your day Bye bye